Welcome to Jerky Bee Makes Pipes. Today it's pipe number 12, the Jimmer. I hope you enjoy this one. Hi folks, Jerky Bee here from Jerky Bee Makes Stuff. Today I'm making, well, I'm working on another pipe. This is something new. Um, a friend of mine named the Jimmer, he uh, decided he could make pipes too. Because, you know, Jerky Bee can do it. How hard can it be, right? And he bought a kit. I forget where. I think probably from the same place I buy my smoking supplies, but not my pipe making supplies, if I remember correctly. And it's a standard sort of bent stem kit. It looks very similar to the kit I used for my first two pipes. But he, you know, hacked away at it for a while and reached sort of an impasse. Um, and I said, okay, I'll see if I can, I'll see if I can save it. It's not in horrible shape. So a couple things that, you know, he wants different. First, he wants it to sit. You know, it's got a nice flat bottom, right? It's, it's a little bit off. Uh, that's easy enough. That just means I profile this bottom a little bit this way. It's right now it's tilted up that way a little bit. You know, I don't know if you can see it, but that's why it, it tips over because it's, it's leaning that way. I'm going to make it lean that way a little bit. That way it won't tip over. That's easy enough. Um, another problem with it, well, this is just because it's not done. It's not really a, a fatal problem or anything. But they start out with these things drilled pretty deep. This is a uh, just a little over an inch and three quarters deep. Um, which is pretty deep for the rule of the pipe, honestly. So, uh, you know, that's that deep. Or that deep. Yeah, comes down to there, right? So, you know, that's pretty deep. Um, so I'll, I'll probably, I have the option of either, well, I'll remove some of the bottom. I was trying to debate whether I would make this pipe shorter because the pipe's going too tall, right? By removing the bottom or removing the top. I think I'm going to back the top down a little bit, make this more like an inch and a half deep or an inch and a quarter deep. That's a more reasonable depth for something you'd actually want to smoke from top to bottom. Inch and three quarters is just, that's too deep. You can't really keep the bottom going, especially with the diameter of this bore, which I've never measured, but I'm, I'm looking at it. Let's see what it says. Uh, three quarters. So it's a three quarters diameter bore. And that's a reasonable size bore also. That's pretty standard in kits. Um, but... You know, something that's an inch and three quarters deep and only three quarters inch wide. You know, you're trying to keep it smoking all the way to the bottom and stuff. So I'll bring the top down a little bit. And uh, I'll probably bring the bottom up a little bit, make it so it leans. He also wanted to hold it in his left hand. So I'm going to try to figure out how I can put little sort of finger grooves on it. It's something I've never done before. I have a pipe that has, that has something like that, which is really kind of cool. So I'm thinking I'll just, I'll make a copy of this in clay. And then I'll sort of squeeze the clay a little bit. With my fingers to see you know what ends up looking comfortable um hopefully jimmer's hand and my hand about the same size now there's one there's one sort of major issue that i'm not entirely sure i can correct and that's where i'm going to start and if i can't correct that then then you know we're done it's going to be an ugly pipe um and i got a couple of blocks over there i can i can make another one if you look i'm going to try to hold this and try to hold this vertical um you can kind of see if this if this is vertical that the stumble's angle, first off, that this top angle here and this bottom angle here don't match, and neither one of them matches this, right? So, like, if I take this straight edge here and I put it along the straight edge on the stumble, on the bottom part of it, um, you can tell it's going at a different angle from the pipe. And then, you know, this top one you can really visually see, but I can't even, you know, it's, it's like this, uh, the angle on that. Now this top one is fixable. All I have to do is get in here with the Dremel, you know, and shape this top down. I can I can draw this notch down. So, so you know, because it's like this, I just gotta bring it down like that. I can leave this end in the right spot. The bottom one is, is tough because really too much material was removed here, right in this spot right here, and I can't pad material. So I'm gonna have to do something that makes that less visually, you know, popping out at you. And, and maybe it involves tapering this part of the stem uh, to match that angle. If I, I bring this, you know, if I bring this thing in like that, say, one thing I'm concerned about is where this where this part lands and where the air shaft is. You know, I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of leeway there. Um, if I can get this out here to show, the air shaft is kind of right there. Right. So I have some. I guess I can bring it in some. Um, this is bad illustration because it wobbles around. I don't know if I've got it straight in there. It's about like that. Yeah, that's straight. 
So I've got a little bit of room there. I'm pretty close though. We'll see. It's something I've never tried to do before. You see, it stands up beautifully until you put the weight of the stem on it. There's also, he's nicked the stem a couple of times here with, uh, with a sander. That's no big deal because you can sand all this down anyway. That'll be very easily fixable. Um, and then I'll bend it. You know, you've seen that a million times. So one of the nice things is that it's already drilled. Uh, and, and, you know, the drilling and the fitting of the stem is a very time-consuming step. It's a few hours, and sometimes it goes wrong, and you have to start over with a new piece of wood. So the hardest part is done already on this kit. Um, and really, I can say, well, it's rough shaped, and I'm just starting from the rough shape. Uh, so, you know, the build time is probably cut in half for me on this. Maybe 10 hours of work to go. Because there's always five hours of sanding and polishing. At least five hours. So you can hand me a pipe that's completely done, except for sanding and polishing, it's still five hours. But I probably got five hours of carving to do on this also. So I had a long weekend this weekend. I haven't worked on, a, worked on the pipe in a while. Um, my garage where I work is not air conditioned, and it's been, you know, in the high 90s here all summer, and my garage has been in the high 90s. Uh, you know, I did a couple things out in the garage, and I was just sweating and sweating. So I said, well, I can't really do good artistic work if I'm suffering a whole lot. So cooling off now it's starting to get closer to fall um i can i can work out there probably this weekend it's not gonna be too hot monday labor day will be will be cool it's only supposed to be about 85 or 83 or something like that. it'll be you know high 80s or low 90s today i was just out in the garage working on the muffler of my lawn tractor and it wasn't too hot out there so we'll give it a shot next step uh gotta make some make a clay model of this so i can figure out exactly what i can do and what i can't do okay <laughs> actually lined up so that I know I have a visual reference when I am grinding or sanding. So I know, I know what angle I'm looking for because most of this is going to be done without the stem in there because I don't nick the stem too badly. Nice line down there.
much improved. Is it perfect? Not quite yet. But I actually haven't even touched this side. A little bit right up here. Um, I may not actually have to do much there. That doesn't look bad. Look at that. It's not bad. some molding marks on the edge here that I'm working on. Let's take those off. There's a little bit of roughness up in the tip here. I don't know if it'll focus on that. It's pretty close. But that's, that's like ridges sticking out and stuff. I just have to worry. I'm going to bring this top down a little bit more and uh, maybe just bottom up a little bit. I'm going to find some calipers to measure the depth of that. I kind of want to shoot for something shorter than an inch and a half in depth. I'll set that at an inch and a half. Let's see how deep we are here. A little bit more. Maybe a quarter inch more or so. If you can see that. That much. So I'm take that much off. up here yeah, you can see it because when I when I want a slack belt up here when you're doing curves it's best to use the part that doesn't have the metal backing behind it it's a little bit of slack there you can it'll wrap around your work more um, you say well, why don't you just leave that off all the time well the way the way that this thing works is the vacuum comes up through here um, and it comes inside so if I don't if I don't put this on the dust collection doesn't work so, you know, when I'm down here, I put that on so the dust collection works. I take it off and the dust collection doesn't work. I'm ready to move to Dremels at this point. It's going to take me a bit to set that up. All right, I'm going to start working on, I'm going to start with the thumb. Because um, that seems like it won't be too hard to do. Hello. Look, the missus is here. I look up the cameras up here. 
She's gonna go get Maxie. All right, so don't use full speed on the Dremel when you do this. If you use full speed, it'll scorch the wood. I should say, you know, I'm using my Cuts All Sphere uh, burr tool. I'm using the gold one, which is a fine. I decided to go with fine because it's going to take a little... I'm not taking off a lot of material here. Um, just making some finger grooves. I went with the sphere because it seems to me that the sphere is probably the closest match to, you know, finger grooves. I can sort of just with the side of the sphere. Get this set a little slow. Let's see, this goes up. Maximum speed is 35. I'm running about, I was running at 20, but I'm bumping it up to 25. So, you know, two thirds. Not bad already. Right. I've just, you can see I've, uh, I've cut the corner off here. So if I can get this to focus here. I've cut the corner off here. I've put it at sort of an upward angle so that, uh, you know, when your thumb sits on it. Now he's, he's going to hold this in his left hand. So I'm doing this in the left hand. I normally hold my pipe in the right hand. But he said, eh, I'm always fussing with the lighter and the, the check tool with my right hand because it's actually right-handed. I'm gonna hold the pipe in my left hand. All right, I'm making him a left-handed pipe, or a pipe for the left hand, or a right-handed person, whatever. So that's sort of a basic shape there. It's nice, I'll have to smooth it out. I'll get in there with a little, let's see, you know, I'll probably use these barrel sander, drum sander things. I got them in all different sizes little ones, you know, medium ones and bigger ones. Probably get in there with this medium one. I might, I might use this guy here. This is a Dremel uh, carving tool. It's got a bunch of blades. We've talked about that. Those end up smoother. But, but these burr tools are great for quickly getting to the right shape. Now here on my clay bottle, which isn't dry yet, you can see I've, I squeezed it, just like I said, and I put some finger grooves there. Um, you can see them, you know, there and there and there. Uh, now this guy's a little taller because I made him the size that this was before I started carving on it. So he's a little tall, um, but it's okay. I'll fit two in there. So the important thing is kind of the angle. And what I may do, I don't know how good the clay model is, is I may just hold it where it feels comfortable and then like lift up my other fingers and take a pencil and trace around. Yeah, that pencil is no good. Not this pencil, maybe this pencil. Just sort of trace my finger. 
myself an idea where that finger is going to land. There we go. And then I'll go in and I'll hollow that out a little bit. See how that works. And then I'll, you know, once that's in place, I'll do the next finger. We'll get two fingers. Just like whiskey. As you guys know, I, I'm making this up as I go along. I've never put, put oh, that feels good though. That feels good so far. So far this is, oh, look, there's a lot of stuff. This is working. It feels good. Now I can't make it exactly match my finger, maybe, because he's not my pipe. But I don't have a model of the Jimmer's hands. And he lives like, you know, 45 minute drive away. So I'm not gonna drive down there and have it say, oh, is this right? And then drive back here and make adjustments. I suppose I could take my tools too, but. Well, next finger. That one wraps way around here and blows it. This is all covered in dust. Hmm. This is leaking a little today. got there is one finger eh? right there got my thumb here hmm. goes in your mouth like this it's nice tap 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 good next finger this one you can see wraps way around so that'll be exciting That one you now starts in about the same place and wraps all the way around down to here. Um, went off the edge a little bit there, but I can figure that out. I got to make sure that this little ridge in between doesn't get too thin. If it gets too thin, it'll start to get sharp. So, you know, my, my fingers sort of naturally fall touching each other, but I'm going to spread them out just a tiny little bit like that when I actually do this. That way, you know. I'll have enough material in between here that it won't just sand off or get sharp. Pretty good. Let's 
change bits. And that smooth one, that uh, Dremel one that's got the cutting cutting edges on it. I said before, this guy. The speed might be a little different on this. I'm going to try it at the same speed, 25 out of 35 to start with. I may have to bump it up or down. They each cut a little differently. My goal here isn't to do any carving with that bit. It's really to smooth out the lines you get when you use burb. So let's see if I can get this to focus. Come on, right here, buddy. Focus. There we go. Um, I don't know if you can see. I smooth this one out with the carving, the Dremel Carver tool. This guy's just got a ton of, you know, striations in it, scratches, basically. Because the burr tool removes a lot of material fast, but it leaves a lot of scratches. It's a little cutting tool. I'm running it slowly so it's not carving. When I ran it faster, um, it was carving a little more than I wanted. So I'm just going to work on this for a while. I'll stop the camera because it's a pretty long video. Uh, this will be boring. Okay, so I've I've now gone over it with the uh, with the Dremel, I've, the um, Dremel cutting bit. I've used a couple different ones. Um, I've gone over it with a a. Let's see. Let's grab these things. What the heck? I've used the flap wheel sander, and I've used one of these uh, round sanders, uh, drum sanders. I've used the drum cutting device and the rounded cutting device, and of course I started with the uh, with the burr tool. And I've got it to the point where you know it feels good, it looks good. Um, I am ready. This has been smoked. You can see it's black inside because the jimmer couldn't wait. I've got a little bit of flattening to do here. The back edge right here isn't quite flat, so I've got to sand it. I put my sandpaper out here on the table. You can't see it. Just I'm just putting a flat piece of sandpaper on a table and you know, going like this. Um, and then it'll all be hand sanding from then on. You know, probably four hours of hand sanding or five hours of hand sanding. It's coming along well, though. And right now we're hours and hours of sanding later, but I've gotten it nice and shaped. Beautiful, you can see the finger grooves there, those two fingers. I've got a thumb groove over here that the thumb sits in. Uh, really sits right in the hand. Uh, I've shortened it up a bit so that like your third finger sits right underneath the bottom. It's really quite comfortable. I like it. I hope the Jimmer likes this. Um, I'm ready to bend the stem now. I've got this, you know, so that it's it's tilted forward quite a bit. See if you guys can see. Here, I'll put it here like this. You can see it's tilted forward quite a bit. I had to really up that angle because it just kept tipping over, you know. So now it sort of sits forward. I'm going to bend this down. You can see that I haven't exactly, exactly gotten the the line of this with the line of that. 
but it's pretty close. It's a little bit off. It tilts just, the stem tilts a, a little bit that way, right? It's not quite straight, but I, I, it's the best I could do. And I think once I bend the stem, um, it's gonna look just fine. So we're about to do that. Just a heat gun, I have it on low heat. Uh, low heat, there we go. It doesn't, oh, that's high heat, low heat. It doesn't take very long. And then I've got a, a bucket of ice water here that I'll put it in. And um, you know, you make sure that you've got this lined up straight. I do have to put in a pipe cleaner to hold it open when we bend. Um, I've forgotten it a couple of times and it hasn't ruined it, but on the internet people say, you know, it's playing with fire. If you don't, if you don't put something to, in the middle to keep it from crushing, it will eventually, that's all the way through, it will eventually um, crush one of them and you'll have to start the stem over and that's a big pain. All right, here we go. It's thirsty work. I just bend this around my thumb. I find that my thumb is about the right, uh, the right curvature. You let it get too hot, and it burns your thumb. Around. Easiest part of the whole thing. I can draw my hands in this. Right out. Next to stain it. I always like to do my pipes in two tone. Um, today, I think I'm going to go with a dark brown for the finger holes, the finger grooves, and then saddle tan for everything else. I'm not sure how well that's going to go. Honestly, I'm a little leery of that. Um, this is probably a mistake, but I think what I'll do first is I'll do the whole pipe in saddle tan. That way, um, the wood won't be as uh, absorbent. It'll already have some pigment in it. Let's see, I get my little little blue gloves on here on my tongue, and. Um, And that way, if I if I experience any running with the darker color, um, it won't be quite as catastrophic. I think it won't, it won't seep in as quickly. I don't know. We're gonna see. Um, maybe I won't do two tone. It's a huge mistake. I know it's a huge mistake, but I like to do two tone on all my parts. Maybe you know what I'll do. I know what I'll do. I'll just do the rim in a darker color and the base in a darker color, and then the rest of it all saddle tan. I think that's what I'll do, because doing the fingers is going to be really tough to get that to be a different color. As usual, I'm just using um, cotton swabs. I'll give my saddle tan a little shake. I'm going to shake that on while I'm at it. Oh, that's good. And again, I think I will cover the entire pipe with this and then just go over the top and the bottom with the darker color. Um, it tends to work better if you cover everything with one color and then just try to accent in a different place. Um, because otherwise you can never quite get the edges to exactly line up. You know, we're not using frog tape or anything like that, like if this was house paint. And it's a bit runny, you know, it absorbs in because it's stain. So making sharp edges 
on the stain is really difficult. I don't have to worry about getting the, uh, the chamber stained um, because it's already, this one's already been smoked. Because my buddy, you know, he half finished the pipe and then he, he decided he was going to smoke it. Smoke with jelly stone. So he did a few times. Um, this one's already black in there. I don't have to worry about spilling stain in there, which is a sign of, you know, not being a super quality pipe or something, whatever. It's a lot of you know, folk. I just look in the pretty. I don't know if you can see that, but that it's got a very nice swirl grain pattern. This is this is a nice piece of wood. Um, smokingpipes.com is where he got this from, which is a place that I buy all my tobacco and lighters and stuff. And if you want to get handmade pipes, it's also a fantastic place to get handmade pipes. I am not paid to endorse them. Um, but I just seem to do. I like. I have good prices. I've always had good luck with stuff I get from there. Do a couple of coats of the saddle tan. It's a slightly darker color than I remember it being, but this is the color I use for the predominant color on most of my pipes these days. It brings out the brings out the character of the wood. If you're paying money for a nice burl, you know. Might as well be able to see the be able to see the wood in the grain pattern in it. It's not bad at all for a kit. Usually your kits have really bad quality pieces of wood in them because they know you're not, you know, if you're buying the kit, they know you're not like a serious pipe maker who's made a ton of them. You're just starting out to see, well, can I carve this? And once I figure out how to carve, you know, then I'll go back and figure out how to fit a stem, which is in drill, which is a giant pain in the butt. That, honest to God, I would love to just use kits. Um, but the angles are always wrong, right? You can only get straight or you can get this, which is, you know, 45 degrees or so. You can never get exactly the angle you want if you want to make anything that's really nice. Okay, let's throw that over there. That part there doesn't really matter, it's covered up by the stem. Okay. Got a paper towel here, give it a little wipe. Honestly, that would look fine. Uh, but you know, I never leave well enough alone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna accent this a little bit. I won't use the red. Maybe I should use the red. Yeah, it's a little cliche these days, the burgundy. I have a burgundy. I also have a black, but I'm not putting black on here. I'll just use this darker, dark brown. See how it looks. Be careful here. I could really mess everything up. I'm just putting a tiny little bit on here. I'm gonna start with the bottom. If I mess up the bottom, nobody's gonna care that much, right? A little bit of dark brown on the bottom. Work my way towards the edges so that it doesn't go over the sides. Yeah. Didn't do a whole heck of a lot. Second coat on there. A little bit darker. Let's see if we can do the top. A lot of people will put a darker stain on the top because you know you're gonna get char up there and everything. Let's so make sure that my hands don't have stain on them. Let's start from the center on this one. It really looks like the same color, doesn't it? It's actually darker. But trust me on that. <laughs> you can see, look, if we look at, uh, like here, right, this one's brownish, and this one's much darker brown, this one's sort of a light tan. So it is actually a different color. 
and you can see it. You can see it on the pipe where I put it there on the center. You can see it's in the middle. It didn't go, get all the way to the edges yet. It's 100 degrees in here today, so my stain should be drying very quickly. We should do it. Give it a quick wipe. Find a clean spot. Wipe like my hands off first. I'm going to have a different paper towel because that one's nasty now. There we go. There. It's subtle, but it's a little bit darker on the top and the bottom. Subtle sometimes is good. Can't find it. Okay, we'll let that dry for a while, and then uh, buffing and polishing. Uh, buffing and polishing. Buffing, polishing. Those are the same thing. Buffing and waxing. Okay, now it is time for the polishing. Let's hold this up a little bit so you can see it better. Uh, white diamond polishing compound on the polishing wheel, pure carnauba wax on the, uh, on the waxing wheel. Put more on when you just stop seeing any traces of it here. It's really hard, this spot right here, I'm having a hard time getting into. Not how easily you can see that, but right there. I seem to be able to get in there. Right there. Switch over to the rocks. You can see it, it kind of leaves a little bit of splatter um, around the edges. And when that splatter goes away, it's when you're right at the edge of not having enough wax set. So let the splatter kind of go away and then work a little bit more, and then you gotta add some more. But eventually you're gonna to have to get rid of that splatter, so that's when you let it run dry of wax.
I'm gonna pull this part off for here. Generally, you wanna leave this on when you're polishing, but if you need to get in here where this is gonna rub up against that, you know, that's a nut. Um, right, it's not, this part here is nice and circular, so it won't cut you up too much. That part there is a nut, right? Those little edges are really mess this up, as will the screw. So you wanna stay away from that, you know, so if I leave this on here, I really can't quite get in there the way I want. All right, that looks polished to me. Looks done. Jimmer's new pipe. Worked out pretty well, I think. So you don't notice that, that this isn't quite parallel to, or quite in line with, with that when it was straight. Um, once it's bent, you know, it looks good. Sits in the hand beautifully. Fingers wrap around just like that. Thumb sits there. I don't think it's too thin. It shouldn't get too hot on the hand. Uh, Jimmer mostly smokes up in the mountains where it's cold as heck anyway, so it should be okay. I'm gonna buff right there a little bit more. Hang on. There we go. Two-tone, a little bit darker on the top and the bottom. It hasn't, it hasn't, it's not super accentuated, but it's a little darker. I'm glad I didn't try to do these fingers a little darker. That would have just not looked good because it's a smooth transition from one to the other. We had some really beautiful swirls in here. Um, here it's here it's all kind of going this way. And there it kind of looks like it's exploded. Uh, you got a bunch of lines going this way and that way, but swirls here. The top's pretty boring. Um, the top is really just... You know, kind of straight lines that go this way. Oh, well, life goes on. The bottom's kind of nice. But, uh, yeah, it's a pretty good piece of wood, though. I like it. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, I'll upload this to my channel as soon as I can. See you next pipe.